Yeah, we live Charlie Mo TV. Uh, with uh, Mentor Mayhem. Uh, how May- you doing, Mayhem bro? the Mentor. I'm doing great, man. Mayhem the Mentor. No disrespect, I, cause I'm maintaining my composure as always. Oh, uh, you was on Boss Talk not too long ago, and uh, you had an incident. Uh, with uh, I don't even want to say OG, but I'm gonna say Perry, Percy, whatever the nigga name is. Uh. Well, you want to show some light when he asked you the meaning of the crib? Uh, you know, you know, I was on the boss talk interview with uh, OG or uh, Percy uh, Melvin, former and a uh, uh, you know uh, E CEO, and Long was a uh, Supreme as well. But uh, we were supposed to be talking about you know how gang banging affects the black community and how we evolved about it and became positive people. But the whole interview was kind of sidetracked by uh, OG's. Uh, OG Percy's kind of comments and what he was trying to do, you know what I'm saying, with his attempts. I don't know what he had going on, but, you know, he was very uh, confrontational about Crippin and what it, what he thought it meant and what all, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But like I was saying, we just two different people doing two different things. Oh, man, when I seen it, man, I was like, damn, that nigga, that nigga told a real Crip nigga he ain't a Crip. Exactly. I'm talking about a nigga called a fade with me. So I was like, God damn, cuz. How this nigga gonna tell Mayhem he ain't no motherfucker or used to be a crip? I mean, ain't ain't no glorifying this shit because ain't no money in it. But, uh, so, uh, he asked you, uh, what the meaning of the crip was. And you, uh, what did you say? I mean, I was trying to, uh, he was asking me to repeat what he, what he was asking me to, to, to repeat the made up acronym of crip, right? Because people always come up with these acronyms and people want to be fascinated with gang culture so much so. People who have made up this uh, acronym for CRIP called Community Revelation to Independent People or Community Revolution, whatever. You know, these are acronyms that, that, that people have made up in their imagination, but CRIPs really don't mean none of that. But he was just trying to, I guess, check my knowledge of CRIP or whatever. But anyway, you know, because I'm dyslexic and I have a speaking ability or whatever, a, a speaking impairment. Uh, I might have twisted up what I was saying, but like I say, if, and at the same token, it really just don't be fresh in my mind because. You know, I was kind of dude who uh, I made Crippin. Crippin never made me. I never had to depend on no type of Crippin. You know, you know who I am. So, you know, I ain't never walked around trying to beat somebody, uh, uh, some big Crip. I, I was way more than than than, than uh, Crippin, or you know, what I'm saying I had way more stuff going on. So I, I just, you know, I wasn't, I, and I did not come up there to glorify or talk about Crippin. I came up there to actually talk about how I grew up as a crip and I evolved. I'm just basically explaining my life. But when you're dealing with somebody who actually never really gangbanged, you got to realize this dude who's calls himself a real OG, he, he was working in the hospital when he was 19 years old. You understand me? He was a good boy. He ain't, he, I, when I was 18 years old, I was in prison. What do you mean working in the hospital? Like, like the and, boys and all this some shit? No, like a good boy. Like a good boy. A good boy got a good job. He graduated high school. He got a good job. He make decent money working at a hospital. You feel me? And then, you know, he never got in drugs. You know, this man started gang banging at 22 years old. 22 years old, I was four years deep in the prison. So at 22, he just started gang banging. I started gang, I started gang banging two years before he did. And he eight years older than me. So, you know, when he talk about his reality of what he think is and my reality is, is, is two different things. And a lot of these guys be thinking they're a real dude until somebody else walk into the room. And now they got to submit. But he didn't want to do that. He'd rather challenge and try to impress somebody else. But I wouldn't, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't there for none of that. I was there to really expire the next person how to stay out of prison. You know what I'm saying? I don't try, I, I, I done spent 17 calendar years in prison. I don't need to encourage anybody to do anything and throw their life away behind any sucker shit. But, you know, unfortunately, we got powder puffs out here that's trying to pull, call themselves shock jocks or willing to say anything, or comfortable disrespecting people who they really don't know, because at the end of the day, that dude really didn't know who he was talking to. At the end of the day, he really didn't know how, you know, you know the situation he was in. He was just comfortable talking in front of me, and I just let him talk, you know what I'm saying? But before, I'm sure he know who I am now. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure he man, wouldn't I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna even lie, man. Hell, man, I was sitting at the house watching YouTube. I was like, man, cut the camera, man. Tell the niggas to take a fade outside, cuz. I don't know some some real shit, man. But you held your composure because you went there for that. You went there for that agenda that he tried to bring to the table. But um, uh, as a black man, I'm proud of you. I seen you, you know. I just, you know, I just did 26. So uh, what you doing now? 
trying to stop the next young black man taking them same footsteps we took, that says a lot about who you is in the long run. But uh, uh, when you were doing the interview with Boss Talk, did, did, did you feel disrespected like from one to ten? Can you I didn't me? feel disrespected. I felt disappointed. Because disrespect and di- disrespect and, 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 and inconsideration, that's why I said the most important thing about respect is disrespect. And I, I told, one of the things I try to teach men, I don't want to teach women nothing. I want to teach young men because it's not my duty. I'm not a, equipped to teach a woman. But as a man, I want to teach young men how to maintain their character and stand on respect, right? It, it, respect is so important. But there's a clear line between uh, disrespect and inconsideration. And the, the, the truth of the matter is I really don't believe that nigga truly understood what he was doing. So, therefore, he was being more of in, inconsiderate than, than disrespectful. I believe if he knew better, he would do better. I believe if he had a chance to do it over again, I'm sure he would show me the utmost respect. But then again, like I said, I don't go around looking to make friends and try to, you know, to pretend. You know what I'm saying? Because this is a nigga who really, to me, is a fantasy nigga, right? He's, he, he's a he's a really, he's a, uh, what do they call it? He's a, uh, he's a, uh, a, a battle rapper. No. I thought you said a buster. No, I ain't going to. See, one thing that I also will say is this, bro. One thing that I know from living my life is that it don't cost a dime to be respectful, but play, being disrespectful will cost you your life. And I can't tell a nigga what he won't do, but I can tell a nigga what he won't do again. I bet you he won't disrespect me like that. And, and, and like I said, you, I, I can't tell a nigga what he won't do because these niggas are so comfortable to get on the Internet trying to be a shock jock and say the most crazy shit. But well, my thing is that when you talk about a real nigga, it's dangerous. And that's what, and I can't save a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Because I know, like I said, I'm loved everywhere. You talk about, you know what it is. I ain't got to tell you shit. Nigga, play yeah, with me if yeah. you want to, nigga. He, hey, know. niggas, niggas, niggas knock you out for fucking with me. <laughs> and I and I, I can't save you. I, I ain't trying to save you. Like I said, I don't believe life is fair, and I don't believe everybody's going to get it. I can only help people who want to get it. As a mentor, that's one of the most important elements I had to understand. I can only help a young person who, who has a desire to change or wants to do better. If not, hey, man, I'm going to tell you, bless your heart. You feel me? Keep it moving, man, because there's somebody out there that need me. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I can't save everybody. I mean, the world is revolving to something that, uh, me, I just go to work. <laughs> I just I just go to work and, and stay out the way. Uh, uh, but when I see you doing your thing, I'm proud of you. Uh, you do uplift me. Uh, when I see my homeboy Curly, all the OGs, you know, ran the street, Trey five sevens, you know, six four Ferguson dudes doing their thing, North Dallas dudes doing their thing, uh, Oak Cliff. I mean, it's money out there, and you ain't got to do a crime to get it. Right. That's what I noticed since I've been home. Now, it might take you a long time. To, I mean, a time to get what you want, but if you work for it, you can get it. And uh, I sure appreciate you coming to Charlie Moore TV, man, and speaking your piece about that incident on Boss Talk. Cause I know you didn't go up there for that, and you blindsided by the bullshit. Right on, right on. Well, we was going up there, like I say, so we can promote my book. Like I say, I would like people to check it out. I got my websites, and I do everything by myself. You know what I'm saying? As uh, uh, again, I, this book is not about me. Book ain't about no prison. Book ain't about no crippling blood. This book is about real facts. It's a nonfiction book about Black history. I'm the narrator of the book. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna find no cuss words in it. It's available for children. You know what I'm saying? I don't use the word nigga in there. I just say black Americans because that's where we is, and I just keep it simple as possible. But it's an enjoyable read, man. And I just walk down uh, history, and I just explain uh, what we can learn from it. There's wisdom and knowledge in the most unfortunate places. Most people just ain't willing to travel there. This book is, a, 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 a like I say, it's, it's a, a unique history lesson that will show you how valuable our uh, art. Uh, we are and what our ancestors went through so we can have the liberties that we have today. I ain't got no personal beef against person. Yeah, man, bless his heart. Man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't got no personal beef. Yeah, I ain't saying... Shout out to, to Melvin Farmer, man, and, and, and like I say, as a true OG, man, I like to say, that's what we were supposed to be talking about. He wrote a book as well. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who did 35 years of incarceration come out and write a book. Man, I like to hear, you know, you need to write your book, man. You know what I'm saying? You got a hell of a story. I still got open cases, bro. Yeah, but don't write no book. Wait till <laughs> hold uh, your book. But uh, at the same time, man, I'm so happy uh, that we got time to uh, talk to you, interview you today, man. Uh, to next time, y'all. This Charlie Mo TV, man. Black life do matter. Re- tell you the truth, all life matter. Uh, so we ain't gonna just say black life matter, but 
All life matter. And all. all life is black life. Yeah. All life is black life. I'm tired of people saying that, man. If you white, you black. If you Mexican, you black. They ain't ready for that. If you, hey, hey, you cannot be a human being without being black. So, yeah, man, don't say, don't even worry about it. Don't say all life, black life. Merry hey. Christmas. Bless your heart if you don't like it.